this week on the show, we have Marissa Peer, who is a well-known speaker, RTT trainer, and best-selling author. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that we have the option of viewing the world with two perspectives. Like the world is a scary place with limited opportunities, or that it's a wondrous, beautiful place where there are limitless opportunities. How fulfilling our lives are boils down to which perspectives we choose. Here's an example. Let's say two people who live in the exact same circumstances both have adopted different views on how they see the world. The first person sees the world as a scary place, binge watches the news, and only focuses on problems. The second person sees the world as a wondrous, beautiful place where anything is possible. Which person do you think has a better experience in life? You guessed it, the person with an optimistic perspective. When we see the world as an exciting, wondrous place that has limitless opportunities, we begin to dwell in possibility rather than fear. As Chris Gardner quotes, the world is your oyster. It's up to you to find the pearls. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I want to talk more about RTT. Um, tell us exactly how it works and how does it reprogram your subconscious mind? Okay, so it works in three ways. So when somebody turns up and says, hey, you know, I can't leave cake. I, I cannot, I don't, know, I don't know what full is. I'm a binge eater. I, I can't get off the screen. I'm always texting. I feel inadequate. I'm no good with confrontation. I don't have people looking at me. We already know immediately that isn't a quad. No babies on here. Don't look at me. I haven't got any teeth. And by the way, I can't get enough food and I don't know what full is and I'm scared of wasting it. And I don't, I'm not good with confrontation and I, I feel insecure. So I never cry. So we know that a baby doesn't do any of those things. Therefore, we acquired these habits, these negative habits of thought. We have habits of action. We have habits of thinking, and the habit of thought comes before the habit of action. I have to think I'm not good enough in order to not be good with confrontation. I have to think I'm not good enough in order to act out and reject me, or be scared of rejection. So we know that somewhere this has happened and it wasn't in the womb or before creation. So the first step is to go back and find out what happened. Never what's wrong with you, but what happened to you? What happened to you? When did this happen to you? What was going on? It's very easy to get that information. The minute you have that information, which is sometimes simple and sometimes profound, the next step is to start negotiating. And, hey, look, you know, of course, when you were five, this made perfect sense when you were eight, but it doesn't make sense anymore. And the third step is to, to make a powerful recording for a client that rewires the mind, that codes in and wires in different beliefs. Wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. Next up on the show, we have Marissa Peer, who is a well-known speaker, rapid transformational therapy trainer, and best-selling author. With decades of experience working with CEOs, royalty, and Oscar-winning actors, Marissa was featured in Taylor's Guide to Britain's 250 Best Doctors. Marissa, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? I am doing amazing. I'm very excited to talk to you. I'm actually a big fan of your work. Let's get into it. Let's talk about RTT. You are the founder of this. I know that before we talk about that, let's talk about, I know that you went to school for, um, and you wanted to be a child therapist. So, so what was it about this field that sparked your interest? Sure, I did want to be a child psychologist. I was really interested in that. But when you're a child psychologist, you always have three mother, father, child, or parent, parent, child. And I always wanted stuff that was fast. I've always been very keen to do therapy that's quick because we live in such a fast world. And so I studied hypnotherapy and thought, wow, this is so much faster than everything else. It's so much better in my experience. And so eventually, after many years of being a psychotherapist and a hypnotherapist, I created my own method called RTT, which stands for Rapid Transformational Therapy. Because that's what people want. They want something rapid, and indeed deeply transformational all at the same time. And so I now actually do work with children. It was always my, my dream to work with children. And now we have RTT in over 1,600 schools. We've got an award for it being one of the best things in education. And we've finally started to do my dream thing, which is work with children. I mean, every therapist should want to put themselves out of business. The idea is let's get the next generation 
to not even need therapy, which is a big ask, but we're doing a lot of great stuff with RTT in schools in England, in America, in Spain, and now in, in the UAE as well. So it's really exciting that, although I thought I'd start off being a child psychologist, I didn't do that, but now I've done something equally good in that I've created a method that's in schools, really helping kids with their self-esteem. Because without self-esteem, you haven't got anything. It's the most important thing to have. Absolutely, and at the age of 25, I know that you moved to LA, um, where you studied uh, hypnotherapy. And I know that Gil Boyne was someone that really inspired you. So so tell us why he inspired you. Do you know, I always thought he wrote innovative. Gil kind of banged his own drum. He waved his own flag. He was different. He he had a belief in therapy and hypnotherapy and he went out on a limb and he just started to train people in this amazing technique and he was such a great guy. I loved him, you know, I love anyone, like I love Wayne Dyer for that reason too and David Viscott and Brené Brown and all those people who go out and say, here I am, I got a message, you might not like it, but it actually is important that you hear it anyway. So. I love self-made people too. I think self-made people are the best. They're so interesting. They've come from nowhere and they did it all themselves. And so Gil was a street fighter and then became an amazing therapist. So I love anyone. I love anyone like that. Louise Hay is another one. Byron Katie, Mel Robbins, all these people. Tony Robbins, I was with him in Germany last month, who go out there and just have a message to make people better. Go, hey, look, you know, I've got an idea of something that could help you, help you have higher service and help you like yourself. And and Gil was a former was someone foremost in that, as was the great Wayne Dyer. And there's a lot of people out there now doing amazing stuff, helping people to like themselves. Because if you don't like yourself, it doesn't matter what you've got, it all becomes meaningless. Absolutely. And I, a lot of your work is about I am enough, you know, teaching people yeah. that they're enough which i think is so important because i feel like most people don't on a subconscious level they don't feel like they're enough so tell us about that message and that movement do you know i've been a therapist for my entire adult life since i was in my early 20s and i i realized very quickly that the common denominator of all of my clients issues is this not enoughness i'm not good enough i'm not attractive enough i'm not worthy enough i'm not interesting enough i'm not qualified enough and i've worked with hundreds of thousands of addicts. I've never met one ever, ever who believed they're enough. And so it was always a going backwards thing. Clients would come in with um, compulsive shopping, compulsive eating, compulsive drinking, compulsive um, using. And it all stemmed as I'm not enough. If I'm not enough, I need more. And But it was never real. Of course they were enough. When I worked for Jane Fonda, I saw that to all these beautiful women who didn't think they're enough and they needed more of something praise, now it's like more screen time, more praise, more followers, mm-hmm. more stuff, so much stuff to make me feel enough. But if I felt enough, I wouldn't need all the stuff. And so I created the I Am Enough movement, which I'm really proud of because it's doing such great work again in schools. People are using the I Am Enough movement. It's just that, you know, I had more, I keep giving these bracelets away, I've only got three left now. But um, I have I Am Enough on my arm, I have it on my pillows, I have it all over my house. Is my passwords are all I'm enough, but don't worry, they're all altered so you can't hack into my computer. But just by having to type it out every day in different forms of different squiggles and numbers, I'm actually stating it, affirming it, embodying it until it isn't what I do, it's who I am. And if we could all do that, it would be a game changer. And I know that because many schools who've taken it say, you know what? Bullying has almost ended in this school. All the kids, they don't do this one-upmanship. They all have a little plaque on their desk saying, I'm enough. We say it in assembly, we have it on the computer screens. And bullying seems to exist in this school because bullies never think they're enough. It isn't just, you can't just look at the kids who are bullied, they don't need help. Mm-hmm. But no kid says, hey, I'm having a great life. Who can I diminish today? I'm so happy, I think I'll make someone feel miserable. Same thing with trolls. They also don't feel enough, and we should help everyone to feel enough. You see, when you know you're enough, you give the whole world consent to join you in your enoughness. It doesn't make you arrogant, Mm. it makes you equal, and that's a good place to be. Absolutely. I think that self-love is so important. Everything stems from it, right? Yeah. And and people don't really, sometimes people on a subconscious level, they don't know why they don't feel enough, but um, I think those three words are extremely important and self-love is very important. So I love that you're teaching that. I want to talk more about RTT. 
tell us exactly how it works and how does it reprogram your subconscious mind? Okay, so it works in three ways. So when somebody turns up and says, hey, you know, I can't leave cake. I, I cannot, I don't, know, I don't know what full is. I'm a binge eater. I, I can't get off the screen. I'm always texting. I, I feel inadequate. I, I'm no good with confrontation. I don't have people looking at me. We already know immediately that isn't acquired. No babies on here. Don't look at me. I haven't got any teeth. And by the way, I can't get enough food and I don't know what full is and I'm scared of wasting it. And I don't, I'm not good with confrontation and I, I feel insecure. So I never cry. So we know that a baby doesn't do any of those things. Therefore, we acquired these habits, these negative habits of thought. We have habits of action, we have habits of thinking, and the habit of thought comes before the habit of action. I have to think I'm not good enough in order to not be good with confrontation. I have to think I'm not good enough in order to act out and reject people who are scared of rejection. So we know that somewhere this has happened and it wasn't in the womb or before creation. So the first step is to go back and find out what happened. Never what's wrong with you, but what happened to you? What happened to you? When did this happen to you? What was going on? It's very easy to get that information. The minute you have that information, which is sometimes simple and sometimes profound, the next step is to start negotiating. And, hey, look, you know, of course, when you were five, this made perfect sense. When you were eight, but it doesn't make sense anymore. And the third step is to, to make a powerful recording for the client that rewires the mind, that codes in and wires in different beliefs. A dentist extracting all that old stuff and then a coder coding in some units. It's those three things together, investigate, extract and code in something entirely different that makes our TT really amazing and able to get phenomenal results with every client we see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I did have a chance to, uh, Charles West actually used our TT on me and um it was very therapeutic and it was very eye-opening to be honest yeah. and you know your work is changing lives all over the world how does it feel to see that and see your institute i mean there are so many people going to learn rtt i know just you know, the most amazing thing it's just such a lovely thing that i feel i was given this gift and i've trained sixteen thousand people some of them are better than me i'm certain of that some of them I like so young and enthusiastic and I've been doing it for 30 plus years and I love it as much but it's a wonderful thing to have a kind of legacy and think, God, I've passed that on, look at all these people. Yeah. You know, we all want to change the world, I mean, who wouldn't want to change the world? But that's a hard ask, but if you want to change the world, you need to change people, one heart, one soul at a time. Look, that's the Uber boat going by on the Thames, it's so cool, we, you know you have Ubers, we have Uber boats, that just one just going past. Wow. <laughs> So it's change people, one person. If you can change a person, you know, in the Torah and in the Quran, it says if you change one life, it's the same as changing everyone. If you save one life, it's the same as saving everyone. So just focus on what you can do to change one person. A bit of praise, a bit of appreciation, be nice to them, build their self-esteem. And but well, we're doing that big time. If I have 16,000 therapists and they've all got hundreds of clients, that's a lot of people. And I can only tell you, they're going to bed and I think, wow, someone in the world is having a better life because of the skill I have. That's just an amazing thing. And most of my grads can go to bed and I think, gosh, someone is having a better life, sleeping better tonight, having a better life today because of the skill that I possess. And that's it's really priceless. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have any. I've been doing this job for 30 plus years. I don't think I'll ever retire. I love it as much as I did on day one. I was working with another guy. Do you know what? I've never worked a day in my life since you trained me. Not a day. Because it's all such joy. I get really well paid, but it's not work. I think when you're lucky enough to love what you do and then you do what you love, it's the best place to be. Mm -hmm. I actually saw a video that you talked about if you have you know, you can monetize your passion and your oh, yeah. your gifts that you're meant to do that. You know? Yeah, you are. Yeah, let's talk yeah. a little bit about that because I know I, there's so many people that have dreams and goals, but they're, they don't think it's practical, right? They don't want to go into it because they don't think it's practical. How would you, what advice would you have for them to kind of step into what they're passionate about? Well, you know, first of all, we're all given a gift. You know, I wasn't given the gift of being Adele or Ronaldo. And I wasn't meant to have that gift. But if I was Adele or Ronaldo, I'd understand, hey, I was given this gift to share it with the world. You know, Adele wasn't put to be a nail technician. 
um, messy but wasn't put here to be a plumber. So when you're given a gift, you're supposed to understand the meaning of your life is to find your gift and to share it with everybody. So whatever your gift is, your gift could be shaping eyebrows. Who would have thought that would have made Anastasia a multi-millionaire? Because the world is different now. It's not go to college, get a degree. It's like, have you got a talent? Can you do a makeup tutorial on Instagram? You know, there are now people on Instagram making millions of dollars who never went to college, but they have a gift or an idea and they can monetize it. Look at Dyson. I mean, Dyson is a great example. He looked at something. Everyone had a vacuum cleaner, watched his wife change the bag, and there's all the dust. She just vacuumed up the dust. It all came out, and he sat and thought about that, and he created the bagless vacuum cleaner. Then he created a hairdryer and straighteners and a fan. He took his little products, and he changed them, and he is the seventh richest man in the UK. So who would have thought? But, you know, the next generation don't want anything new. They want vintage stuff. They want, is that going to go to landfill? My daughter doesn't buy anything new. They're very into vintage, pre-loved, because they care about the planet. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of money in stuff that we didn't know there was money in. And when you add a vision to a belief, you see, belief without talent can get you much further than talent without belief. But if you have both, you can be unstoppable. So they have belief and they have talent. And you can have a little talent and a lot of belief, and that would take you a long way. But if you have talent and belief, and you can believe in yourself and believe in your product, then it's amazing what you can do. Absolutely. And and speaking about belief, you know, you've trained celebrities, royalty, athletes, Man. all kinds of people. How do you kind of switch their mind from one of lack to one of to one of abundance? Well, you know. The way you feel about everything is really down to the pictures you make in your head and even more the words you say to yourself. So your reality is shaped by your language, mm -hmm. by nothing else. The language comes first. If you say, oh my God, I'm so scared, and you say, I'm so excited, I'm going on a date, I'm terrified, I'm excited, the mind can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So when you're wanting to go into abundance, which means a lot of good stuff, you have to use your language. I'm, so when I was a single parent, we didn't have money, I was a single parent in debt. I said, my daughter, you know, darling, we're so rich, we're so wealthy, we're so abundant. I never talked about money, but I said, we've got everything. We are wealthy beyond belief because we had a house, we had a heating, we had. I went to took, take took us to feed some homeless people one Christmas and came home, and I felt like a billionaire because, wow, I've got heating, I've got clean sheets, I've got money in the bank. And so I always had this abundance mindset. I've got everything, my life's amazing. And if you can create that mindset, because whatever you focus on, you move towards. It's like going on a highway. You got to keep going forwards, but you can't go in two highways at the same time. Go, I want wealth, but I'm terrified. I want money, but I don't want to do the hard work. I want money, but what if you never know who your friends are anymore? What if your kids get kidnapped? What if you find a gold digger? So what you're doing is trying to go in two lanes now. I want it, but I'm creating all these blocks. You've got to go in one lane. I want it, I'm worth it, and I'm going to do good things with it. Because if you want to create wealth, and you do great things with the world. The more, if you can sit down with a piece of paper I've got a note pad here, and just write out all the reasons you'd like wealth, and make sure some of them are to benefit others, because the more reasons you have for wanting it, the more likely you are to have it. You can't think, oh, I'm just gonna sit here and go, I'm shanty, I'm shanty, it's gonna fall out of the sky. But what are you gonna to do to create? What are you gonna invent or create or improve? What are you going to do? Because the best plan in the, in the world isn't going to work if you don't work too. But you've got to believe you're worth it too. That's so. Think of Je Jennifer um, Anderson holding up the shampoo going, you're worth it. That's the most successful advert in the world. Mm -hmm. Because it says you're worth it. And all of our pain comes from the lies we tell ourselves. I'm not worth it. I'm not enough. I don't deserve it. And it isn't true. And here's another thing about people think, you know, I've got to be a spiritual person to make money, but spiritual people shouldn't have money because they're spiritual. I've met many people who weren't spiritual, who became millionaires and then became spiritual. I know someone who made all his wealth in real estate and then had so much, didn't know what to do with it. So he rewilded. Well, I've got to be good to make the money. Make the money, then do something amazing with it. Do something incredible, rescue animals, create sanctuaries, build schools, put water, they haven't got it. There's so much you can do. Like, you know, for me, if I hadn't made money being a therapist, I could never have created my kids' programs because they're all free. We pay for them, we put them in schools, we do it all, we pay for everything, it's all non profit. But I had to make the money as a therapist, as a trainer of therapists, to have that money. 
to now make sure that kids all over the world have a program that builds their selves. If I thought, oh, I've got to be, you know, this therapist and noble spiritual person and, and not make any money, I can have had my program in 1,600 schools. So we've got, we got to stop this block in the head that, you know, pursuing money is bad. Money can be beautiful. It can do amazing things if you do good things with it. Absolutely. And I, I noticed the people that have massive wealth are the ones that are of service to the world, as you said, right, in their own way. So there's definitely yeah. a correlation of being of service to the world and making lots of money. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. People think, you know, they, they, we always think, especially like fat cats, filthy rich. Look at that rich bitch, dirty money. And it's such a shame that we've grown up with this belief that money is evil, that the Bible says money is evil. It says the pursuit of money at the expense of everything else is the root of all evil. It doesn't say money is evil, because it can't be evil, because you can do so many good things with it. You can build hospitals, you can put people through school, you can do so many good things with it, but you've got to create it in order to do that. And then when you do that, you get rid of this brainwashing that says, you know, money is evil, money is bad. People who've got money are ruthless and they don't care. There probably are people like that, but there's a lot that aren't like that at all. We mustn't all be put in the same box because it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I actually had a, a little bit of a trick where I started thinking as of money as my best friend that just wants to show up for me all the time. And yeah. as soon as I changed my mindset on it, money just started to flow in. So I think it's a little brain hack, just changing your perception of or, or what you just see money differently and it, it'll show up for you differently, right? Yeah, you see it as energy yeah. and, and you believe that you can do beautiful things. If you can do beautiful things with money or good things with money or noble things with money, then you get over this belief that it's dirty. And your job is to think better thoughts because a belief is nothing more than a thought you think a lot. So if your mind's job is make your thoughts real, then your job is think better thoughts so your mind can make those better thoughts real. And don't do it sometimes, do it all the time. Absolutely. And Marissa, you talk a lot about the law of attraction in your videos, whether that's yeah. attracting love, wealth. So what are some practical steps that our viewers can take to become a vibrational match for the things they desire? People have got the law of attraction very wrong because I think you sit there like this and focus. Yeah, I'm going to attract a great person. Oh, they just turned up at my door. And unless that's the delivery person, they're probably not going to work. So three things, you have to do three things. The first thing, the most important by far, is to sit like this and just say, I'm worth it, I'm worth it, I'm worth it, because 80% of your success is down to one thing, having a worthy of success mindset. The first bit is easy, but you've got to do it every day. You sit and you go, let's imagine you want great love, or a great career, or great success, or great health, no matter what it is, you have to sit and go, I'm worth it, I deserve it, I'm worthy of love, I'm deserving of love, I'm worth love, I deserve love. Say a lot, and if you go, oh, I feel really weird when I say that, I feel all silly, well then you need to say it even more, because you've got to make it so familiar that you run out of objections, you're the one going, well that's not going to work, and who's going to want me anyway, because I've got three kids and cellulite, and then you think, oh, I'm objecting, let me just keep doing it and very quickly your mind will run out of objection go, there you go again with that I'm enoughness, must be true. So step one, tell yourself you're worth it, you deserve it, you're worthy of it. Every day do that in the shower because the shower is a very meditative place. What else are you going to do? And they go, oh, I love the smell of this body wash. That's step one. I'm worth it, I'm worth it. Anchor it to the shower, do it every day and soon it will stop being what you do, it'll be who you are. The second step is Really take a look at what you want. What do you want? Is it love? Is it wealth? But be very clear. Like, I wanted to write a book. When I looked at it, I thought, oh, actually, no. I want to write a best-selling book. And actually, if I want to write a best-selling book, it helps people. So now I know what I want. Mm -hmm. The third step is do the work. Which will get very confused at work. I thought the secret said just manifest. Oh, no, 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 no. Anything you require, require to do some work. Let's imagine you want to be an artist and you can paint great pictures, but you're going to now go slogging around galleries and here's my picture, here's my picture, like my painting, no, I don't like it. Actually, I do like it. Actually, I know someone down the road that will love that or I would like a different version of that. But unless you do step three, which is the work, show people your book, show them your product, tell them who you are. But you see, the thing is, if you do step one, I'm worth it. You can do step three because you don't have that, oh my God, they might reject me. They go, no, 
I'm worth it. You know, when Eminem wanted to be a rap star, he was told over and over again, you know, they're going to be a rap star, you're never going to be a rap star, you don't look right, this is very much a black guy's thing, and here you are, white guy, blue eyes, who do you think you are? And he was so angry that he was even more determined than ever to be a rap star. But he knew what he had to do, he had to keep going and rapping and rapping and rapping. He saw what he had to do, mm -hmm. but he did the I'm worth it. And then he was rapping at some event, and it wasn't Jay-Z, it was somebody else, a very incredible um, guy in the music business who saw him, signed him. But recently, when, when Ed Sheeran wanted to be famous, and he thought, you know, who am I? I've got white skin, red hair, glasses. It was Eminem that said, Ed Sheeran, this is what you do. And he kind of did what I'm telling you to do. He had to, you just got to keep going. You know, you can't just play your guitar. You got to go to auditions. He had, I mean, Ed Sheeran was busking in the streets, sleeping in parks, but he knew what he had to do. I've got to get out there and practice, get all used to my voice. What do they like? What do they don't like? What works? What doesn't work? Let me write some material. He is now, I think, the richest um, single recording artist in history. And in that is our lesson for everybody. Step one, and it's an important step, and step you do all your life. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. Step two, take a long, hard look at what you want and look at what it requires of you, look over it, around it, put on x-ray glasses and really look at what you want. Oh, I'm going to have to do that and that and learn that. And then step three is do it, but sometimes the lift isn't working and you've got to take the stairs. Sometimes the elevator success is out of order, but the stairs always work. That means it may take a bit longer. But when you realize that a delay is a delay, it's not a denial. You know, I've had books rejected, stuff returned but i've also had books that have been bestsellers and for every rejection i probably had 10 yeses for every no but you have to learn not see the learn, no is not a denial it's just a delay come back and you'll do even better yeah i i think that's great advice is that you know first you have to believe you're worth it and, and also yeah and also of course being uh clear on what you want but of course taking oh, inspired cool. action of course right mm. i think people miss the inspired action with the law of attraction they miss it all the time yeah they say that's going to be a millionaire i'm going to be a millionaire but they don't understand that you're going to do something yeah but the great thing is when you find out what your gift is you like the doing something it's great fun writing books writing songs performing when it's what you're put on the planet to do it when, when you do what you're meant to do you never really work I mean I work very hard I also feel like I don't really work very hard at all because I love what I do so much mm -hmm. and Marissa you know I created my platform to inspire to uplift and to be a beacon of light for anyone watching so I want to ask you for anyone that's going through a hard time or just just not seeing their goals happen maybe they feel frustrated what would you say to inspire and uplift them well, just focus on one goal at a time. You don't think I'm going to lose 10 pounds, get a great body, find a great partner, get this. Just, just pick one thing, a career goal, a relationship goal, a health goal. And just do one and break it down step by step and really look at how you can achieve this goal. Be very focused on it because your mind is a goal-seeking mechanism. We do so much better with goals. And if it isn't working, but, you know, Maybe it just takes longer. We tend to overestimate how quickly we can get success. And people will tell you, you know, it took me a long time to get to that level. Even Beyonce, she didn't start as Beyonce. She started off in a girl band before that. She had another band, but she got there. But it, it's very rarely overnight. So you've got to work at it. You've got to believe in yourself. You know, the best plan in the world is it going to work if you don't work too. Absolutely. So if you do that, it will be amazing. Absolutely. Marissa, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's really been an honor because I, I really love watching your videos. I feel like they're so helpful and you really are inspiring millions of people around the world. So keep up the amazing work. <laughs> well, I've been inspired by lots of people too. So I'm glad I'm one of them now. That's a very nice feeling. Pack TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.